Hi folks, it's Chuck, K0XM, and wanted to shoot a video today about the operation of the DV Mega, and actually any Mega, or uh, excuse me, hotspot for DMR and multi-mode digital uh, use, based upon the MMDVM multi-mode digital voice modem running Pistar. So let's say you get a hotspot from us, and you get it home, and it's either not connecting to your home network or through the Wi-Fi for one reason or another, uh, improper entry of the credentials, or you just want to be able to hard tie it or wire it into your uh, network that way. So first thing you need to do is you need to find out the IP address of the hotspot. Now, there's one of two ways to do that. Number one, you can look at your home router. If you don't have access to your home router, which we're finding a lot of clients don't, you can get a program and put it on your computer. It's called Angry IP Scanner. I use it a lot, and what it does is it will scan the the network to show you what is connected. Now, I'm going to stop it right here because, as you see right here, it shows Pistar at 2.61 on our network. So there is the IP address. At that point, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to bring up a browser, and you can do one of two ways. You can do Pistar dot local let me turn off the caps so you want to make sure that uh, you get everything in small and what will happen is it'll go out and if it finds it on the network that way then you're in good shape if it doesn't then you have to go to your IP address and we figured out that our IP address on our test unit was 192.168.2.61 yours will be different so I'm going to go to this address, and boom, there's the top Pistar dashboard for the hotspot we have here at BridgeCom. Now, what we got is, as you see all this activity, and it's showing uh, reds the loss, and there's a couple of situations where there was some high loss, and this is monitoring talk group 310. You can go in, you set up your configuration, standard default password is Pistar and then Raspberry. That's default on all of them. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to change it when you get yours. And you have to go through and set all these parameters. you got to put your call sign, your DMR number, the frequency you're operating on. This one does not have the Latin launch in it properly. Put the location. Uh, you want to select the, the modem type. You want to make it public. Why do we make it public? You make it public so that even if you have a radio that has a different DMR number, you can still use this hotspot. The minute you go private, it has to see this DMR number on the radio or it's not going to work, folks. So that means if you have multiple hotspots and you follow the Brandmeister contention of adding 01 to first one and 02 to the second one, like 01 and stuff like that, if you bring up a radio that does not have that 01 and you're on private, you're not going to talk through the hotspot. Okay, and then when you come over here and you set your time zone. We're in America, Chicago here in the Midwest. And it rolls really fast on the mouse. And then you want to put it to whatever your keyboard dashboard language is. Then you select a master. Now, there are four masters in the United States. You've got New York, Dallas, West Coast, and the, the test master, where all the Brandmeister testing is done is 3108. It's based in Atlanta. So you, if you pick one of those, and then you hit Apply Changes after you're done with every window. Now, configure the Wi-Fi. Let's configure the Wi-Fi. So what we want to do is you want to come down here to Wireless Configuration when you're plugged in. You hit Configure Wi-Fi, and it's already showing the Bridgecom network in here. Let's add another network. So let's put Joe's into the SSID, which is the name of the network. Let's put Joe's test router. Okay. Now, notice the background is red. Doesn't like the aster or the uh, ast the uh, comma. So you have to take out all special characters. And then let's make password as our password. And then boom, once you save and connect, it will store that in Pistar. Okay. So since I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete this so I don't mess up this router. So that's where we're at there. Now, 
What happens if you get on 3100 or 310? As you can tell, 310 pretty much was going 24-7 here before we got it killed. Now you notice this this talk this little setup right here with the uh, talk group 4000. That is the talk group 4000 is a disconnect. Now the hotspot is a simplex device, which means it can either transmit or receive. It can't do both. So if it's talking and you need to shut it down, you can't get in. So at that instance, then what you have to do is and you have to go over to Brandmeister. This means that you have to be registered on Brandmeister with an account and be able to get to your dashboard. Now I'm going to bring up my dashboard and it's going to have a lot other stuff on it that you won't have. So I'm going to log in here on Brandmeister and I'm going to bring up one of my hotspots as a typical. Now let's see if the little catch, yep, all right, got to go through all the bridges. And I uh, hope that that's what works there. So let's verify that. Let's see if we're good. Ah, good. I didn't miss any this time. All right. Now, you notice the hotspots over here on the uh, on the left. You got hotspots. Now, none of mine are online because they're all red. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one of them up. And what happens then is if you need to drop a talk group, you come down here to your actions window on your hotspot. And you hit either drop call and then drop dynamic groups, which means it will stop and it will free up the activity on your hotspot so that you can do whatever you want. Well, what do I do at that point? Well, then you change your channel, you move to a different talk group, and you key up momentarily. That will activate that talk group on your hotspot. Now, remember, there are over 1,250 talk groups on Brandmeister. Your hotspot has the capability of performing on every one of them you need to wake it up or key up on it to make it active on your hotspot. Until then, you won't hear anything, which means if you have a hotspot, you have a scan list, it's going to be real quiet because you're not going to be able to hit and activate five talk groups or five channels on that hotspot. It's a one talk group device. So making a scan list for a talk for a hotspot is, is futile. It's not going to do anything for you at all. Anyway, that's it. Any questions or anything else you'd like to see, let us know. This is Chuck, K0XM at BridgeCom, 7-3.